All right, great, we're live. So hello and welcome to the call. Thanks for getting on today, Aaron. Oh, you're on mute. I'm off mute now, sorry. There we go. Yes, so thanks for joining us. So um, we're really excited to have you on and you're gonna share a few things with us. So I'll let you, I'll hand over to you. Well, Katie, thank you. And, and uh, you know, my, my heart, my hopes and prayers go out to Doc Fizz as he's uh, got a, a brother who I believe is, uh, is struggling a little bit this weekend. So that's why he wasn't able to join us. But, um, but always good to see you, Katie, and everybody on the call. And, uh, and of course, we've got a lot of things to talk about. This is, um, it's been interesting the last couple of, uh, the last couple of months, uh, many people, many of you probably know that we're in the process of making some big enhancements and upgrades and um, some changes of the, to the technology. And I, for one, I uh, can tell you that I've been a little uh, a little more excited than most because when we made the adjustment and change over to uh, to our existing platform and system, uh, we knew that we could make it better. And so that's what we're in the process of doing is really trying to create something that I believe many of you will say, geez, finally, we've, we've really got something that can help us build our business. And of course, technology, we all hope will always do that. That's, um, you know, that's the point. Here we are on Zoom. Here we are on uh, Facebook, here we are on these wonderful little uh, uh, computers or phones or tablets or whatever it is that we use to communicate, but these are all money makers, if you will. And just like that, the same technology can be said for other uh, parts and parcels of the of the company. So I am excited today because I know I've talked about it a lot. It's kind of my my chant that I continue to harp on and I continue to go over every time we talk. But I think it's so important because there aren't many people that I know of uh, in business specifically, that aren't looking for a way to get the return on their investment, whatever that investment is into uh, that they've made. So when we think about it, return on investment, sometimes people think, okay, well, you know, hopefully I can um, I can invest in some stock or I can invest in um, some uh, ABC company or I can invest in some alternative uh, you know source of income that might give me the ability to have a return but they don't really understand how to actually make that happen. And so if I can do a couple of things, one of the things that I've done is I've really tried to understand better how to help people determine how to get the return on their investment. And if you aren't thinking about your business as a business, and you're not thinking about it as a return on your investment, then you're not thinking about it properly. If you're in it for the business. Now, if you're not in it for the business, no big deal. Uh, it, this is a simple conversation, but what I hope to do is I hope to give you a couple of stepping stones that will allow you to think about it like a business and to really kind of think about it from the standpoint of your brain. What do I need to do to get a return on my investment? And how do I, how can I go out and build a business and how can I utilize the income that I have or the sources of income that I have and really start to put it into investing into my future. And of course, we've had an interesting time and my heart and prayer goes out. Uh, to many of those people that have been suffering over the last couple of months. Uh, I know that uh, I talked about this uh, just earlier today. We had a big meeting um, uh, with many of our top management, and I was talking about how crazy it is that it just seems like it was years ago that I was in Europe, which was really only in the uh, end of February, first part of March. And I, it just, for me, it seems like it was years ago. But when we really stop and think about it, you know, time has kind of gone on and all of a sudden we're starting to come back to it. But I actually put um, some thoughts into our marketing team's head on Wednesday of this week. And I said, what if your plan B became your plan A? What if it mandated that your plan B became your, your plan A? Uh, what if it was that uh, you didn't have a choice? What if, the, what if circumstances really said, hey, guess what? You don't have a choice. Your plan B is now your plan A. And for a lot of people in the world, that happened. That's it's not fiction, guys. This is this is reality. And so for a lot of people, they're they're literally looking at how they can create a better plan B that may be able to transpose or or actually become certainly a plan A. And so what I wanted to do was think about it from more of the business aspect and really help people understand there is a way to create an income stream, and there's also a way to make sure that what you're doing has some benefits to it. And I always talk about, you don't wanna be in the red. General accounting uh, terms is that, uh, you know, if your company's in the red, it means you're really in debt and that you're not doing well. If, you're, if your company's in the black, hey, hallelujah, you're actually making money. So the point is, how do we help people understand that 
yeah, you've got money, you're putting money into your business every month and you're doing things that you're currently doing uh, to create a source of income. But if you're not thinking about it and driving it like a business and managing it like a business, then you'll really not probably get to the point of actually having a successful business. Now, people love the product. So that's one thing that I talk about is getting your return on your investment is really your initial product purchase. It's really the amount that you invested into your, into your business and how do you get that back? And one of the things that I always tell people is really look at the, the amount of money that you put into your business and then find four people that put that amount or more into their business to get started. And if you think about it from that, that perspective, the fast start bonus that we have, it's really just a very unique, easy way to think about it in a simplistic term. How do I get my return on my investment? Well, it's simple. I go out and I find four people that put in as much or more than I did in my very first investment into my business, getting them to do the same. Now, the, the point is, it's duplication that drives this business. It's duplication that will help you obviously create something that will, that will create a return. And so that relationship is now I've got to teach them to do the exact same thing. And so that's really where we start to go into the next level of what we're trying to accomplish. So again, real simple, four people coming into your business at or above the same amount that you came in at, you'll have an opportunity to see that that translates into a return on your initial investment. And so again, real simple, start that way. Um, for all of you that are brand new on this call today, for all of you that are watching for the first time or listening for the first time, realize that that's step number one. It's real simple. But once, once you start there, the product for free conversation really has to come about. Because what I tell people is that it's simple to think about it from the perspective of how do I get my product for free? I'm qualifying for these incredible products every month. And really, quite honestly, I love the products. So for me, I'm going to take the products regardless. I think many of you on the call today would say the same thing. Many of you that will listen in in the future will say the same thing. You, you love the product. You've never had products like these before. Not they're, they're just very, very, very unknown in the general populace. So a lot of people have to learn about them. And, but once they learn about them, once they try them, once they start using them, they become products that they want to use every month. So the one thing I tell people is that I want to show you how to get your product for free. And then people say, what does that mean? I don't understand what that means. Well, of course, if you're using $100 worth of product a month, how do I make sure I cover that product cost? If you're using $200 a product a month, how do I make sure that I help you cover that product cost? Because you're qualifying for your commissions and for this business. And of course, that's a real simplistic term uh, to think about. The qualification is obviously the amount that you have to put into your business every month in order to earn commissions. But what I want you to think about is that if I can show you how to get your product for free in real simplistic terms, it'll start making more sense. And really for a lot of people, if you're looking at the, those first four people, I want to boil it down to three that you're going to start working with on a daily basis. And those three people have made a commitment back and forth. You guys have, have made choices, decisions, and promises to each other. How am I going to help you succeed? And again, I always use a, a person here. So I've got Katie who I'm looking at on my screen. And I say to Katie, <clears throat> excuse me, I say, Katie, I want to help you get your product for free every month. And so let's start with those first three people that you brought into the business that have made a commitment. We've made a promise to each other and let's go help them do exactly what you did. You brought in your three or four. Of course, we want to make sure you get your return on your initial investment. But you can do that through customers and you can do that otherwise. So it's it, again, it makes it real simple. But if we start looking at bringing people in and we can show them how to bring their first three people to the point where they're working with their first three people, now you've got literally a total of 12 people that are working within your organization. And those 12 people start to work and they start to build their business. And so they're going out and they're qualifying with the amount of orders. And let's just say for simplistic term, let's say that they're spending $100 a month. And so you've got three people on your first level. And if you, again, just basic math, if you times that amount in, in a simple equation, it ends up with about $21. Now that's not gonna get you there, is it? So we wanna make sure that we start working on the next level. And the next level with again, nine people, now you've got a total of 12 people at $63 on that level times 7%. So $63 plus the 21, now you're at $84. So you're getting close to that $100 equation. 
Now you want to start working on that third level. And again, I use an easy three by three matrix because it makes it real simple for people to understand that it's only if I can work with three people to work with their three people to work with their three people, you've now got 39 people in your business. And those 39 people in the total equation are going to end up at about $184 in their income stream. And so when we think about the 84 or $189, and now you've got plus the 84 that you had from your two first levels, that first and second level, now you're at $273 a month. Now your product's being paid for every month. And maybe you start to increase the types of products that you want. Maybe you start to increase the amount of products that you receive, or maybe you want to start sampling out so that you can continue to invest back into your business and put those products into people's hands so that they can start using those products. They get a testimonial, they love the product, and now they want to come in and start being a part of your business. So again, a real simple term is $273. Now I'm using US dollars. I know we've got people on from all over the world. You never know where somebody's at. So I just use my simple terms for math here. You guys can do the same equation on your uh, dollar that you guys have in your various countries that you guys reside. But I want you to think about from the standpoint of a real simple term of being able to understand how people can get the product for free. If we all had that conversation every single day with the people that we work with, I can guarantee you one thing. You would have a lot of happy people in your organization. Your team would be actually very, very, very fulfilled. They'll, they would be successful. They would start to see that, you know what, what Aaron said was right or what Katie said was right or what Sandy said was right or, or Renee or whoever it might be that's, that's on this call right now. I think I saw the proctors even uh, from down in Florida. So we've got people from all over the world. And if, if everybody started having the, the same conversation, it would really change the dynamics of the organizations and the teams that are currently out there. And it's really the psychology of the plan. I mean, if I think about it from the psychology of the plan, I think, what does it do to drive behavior? What does it do to drive uh, certain indicators that people are using on a daily basis? And how are they going to go out and do what I, what I told them to do and then take it to that next level? Because there are certain profit centers that we don't talk about a lot. You know, we, we don't want to get into some of the deep, dark secrets. Maybe you call it the weeds. You know, we don't want to get into the weeds. But the fact is that at some point you have to get into the weeds because you have to know what's out there in the future. Because if you're doing everything right and you're starting to build the team and you're starting to build your organization, your organization is growing, what happens? Well, you're going to see that your organization will start to take you into uh, four levels of payout and five levels of payout, six levels of payout, seven levels of payout, and then comes the infinity bonus. And the reason that we structured the infinity bonus is that we made it so you would always be incentivized or always motivated to help your entire team, to give everybody the same attention so that it didn't matter how deep they were in your organization. You're still not in a completely altruistic relationship. You want to help people, but you've got to be rewarded. And that's one thing that I think a lot of people don't think about is how can I help everybody within my organization and still be rewarded um, because again, in business, I don't want to waste my time with people that, that, uh, that aren't going to make me money, obviously, from that perspective. And I know that sounds a little tough and it's a little bit brash, but the bottom line is I want to be helping those people that are going to help others do the same thing that I did. And so by doing so, you know, when uh, Katie, uh, last time I was in Australia last year, I think it was um, March, I think or maybe April, but I think it was March. Um, but for instance, I got into, um, into Melbourne and I, I met up with Katie and uh, we had a great meeting, great time, great opportunity, uh, but there were all these people there. And all of those people may not have been on the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh level, mm -hmm. but there may have been people all the way down in the 20th or 30th or 40th level in Katie's organization. But why was she so motivated? because she actually gets paid off of those people that are deeper in her organization. And that's part of the infinity bonus. So when we think about the infinity bonus, it really allows people uh, to be rewarded when they help others win. I mean, it's really that simple. And I consider winning, of course, seeing people become successful. I consider that uh, in health. I consider that in wealth. I consider that in happiness. I want to see everybody become successful. I want to see people uh, achieve the successes that they hope to achieve and be able to enjoy the fruits of their labors because we're all working for something. And I don't think it's fair that some people say, oh, I don't want to tell anybody that I'm making money. 
well, I'm in this for a business and I want them to know that they can be in it for a business. They don't have to be. They can actually just love the product and that's fine. Go take the product, use it every day because I love you for using the product. But I also want you to know that I'm actually have taken this on as a business and you can do the same thing. And it's really simple to get started. So we talk about the return on investment. We talk about getting your product for free. Now we're talking about helping others within your organization. And that starts to create volume within your group that actually takes you to next levels in rank. And as your rank grows, not only do certain things happen like rank advancement bonuses, which I won't get into all the numbers there, but they're great, just lucrative little, little pops along the way as you continue to be uh, motivated to go up the ladder and to, to, again, continue to build your organization. But then you have an opportunity to actually get a little bit of a win here and there. So you see, oh, good, I got another rank advance bonus. Oh, wow, that's exciting. I got another rank advance bonus. But as you do so, then you start getting your luxury bonus. And of course, I always tell this story, and sometimes I'm a little hesitant to tell it because it's a little bit, uh, for a lot of people, it's close to home. But I, I've told the story about being in Georgia, and some of you have heard it before. Uh, and I say Georgia, the country, not the state, because uh, yeah. here in the U.S., we have Georgia. Um, but, uh, but I tell the story about this person when I was going through one of these exercises, talking about people's goals, their financial goals, how are they going to get there? What are they going to do to achieve it? I remember there was a person that I talked to. And again, I know I've told the story to a couple people, but for those of you who had not heard it, the fact is that I asked everybody to share their answers with me. I said, you know, just tell me, what is it that you hope to achieve here? What is it that you want to accomplish? And so one of the people in the audience there, and again, Tbilisi is a, a very poor, poor country, uh, city, uh, Georgia is a, uh, the, you know, poor country, uh, Tbilisi is a, is a poor city, um, there's a lot of corruption there, there are a lot of people that, uh, especially in politics, that have, you know, figured out a way to abscond with lots of money and, and really just not fair people. But at the same time, you've got just wonderful people there. And so she started telling me that she wanted to make 10,000 US dollars a month. And I said, US dollars, okay, that's fine. For what? And she kept saying, well, I want to make $10,000. So I have it in my bank account. I said, I understand. For what? And she would say, well, I want to make it so that I have $10,000 a month coming in. I said, I understand. What's it for? Because once you can quantify what it is that you want that money for, it makes all the difference in the world. And that's why so many people do their dream boards or their vision boards, because they want to have something that, that allows them to see and visualize what it is that I want to achieve. So finally, I said to her, what's it for? Tell me what that does for you and your family. And she said, you know what? She started crying and she said, I've got two kids. I'm a single mom. I make very little income. My kids don't have nice clothing. They don't have nice shoes. They don't go to a very good school. I live in one of the poorest communities in all of Tbilisi. And I just wish that I could give them something more. I wish that I could give them the nice clothes. And I wish I could give them the nice and latest, greatest shoes. I wish I could get them in a postal code that would allow them to have a good school system that they could actually thrive. And I wish that I could put money away to give them higher education so that they could actually do something more with their life. And she said, but it's not easy but I want to do that for my kids. And I, I will never forget that conversation because for me, it became the reality of what we do every day. It became the reality of how we can help people. And it became the reality of what I need to do on my side from the corporate perspective to help support you guys out in the field. And so I just never will forget that. But one of the things that happened is that I talked to her about, um, at that time it was the, it was, well, it's still somewhat the luxury bonus. So let's just go off of that. But the luxury bonus allows people to utilize a bit of income that they can go out and do the things that they want to in life. And so whether that means moving to a better postal code, whether that means uh, being able to go on a holiday with your family or friends, whether that means uh, being able to buy a better car vehicle so that you can drive around and, and drive in luxury, uh, whatever it is, whatever that luxury means to you, that's your decision. And we want to give people that opportunity. And so for me, that's something that I see just as a little bit more, a little added extra incentive to go out and build and help and, and develop your organization and your team. Now, the last one that I really get into is the opportunity um, to have the master check match. And again, a lot of people don't realize it, but the master check match is a great psychological driver in terms of how we help people because it really delivers the results. You're helping people and you're actually earning a percentage 
of all of their income. So when you think about it again, and I say all of their income, but from the direct commissions, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds here. But when you think about it from the standpoint of their direct commissions, you're actually getting a percent of whatever they are earning in generations. So you have a big organization, that big organization, the way it stands today has somebody that's sitting right here at the top. You work with them and help them develop all of these people within their organization. And as that continues to grow, their check goes up and so does yours. So it's a huge win-win. And a lot of people don't understand it. And a lot of people don't talk about it. But I think it's, a, it's an incredible opportunity as we talk about these stepping stones to give just another stone along the path that allow people to take those added additional steps in helping people, nurturing people, developing people, developing organizations and teams and giving them an opportunity to succeed. And for a lot of people, they just don't understand it. They, they do not really take this into consideration when they're starting to build their team. And I wish everybody would have that same conversation. And it's probably why I talk about it almost every time I have an opportunity to talk about the business. Sure, I could talk about the products all day. And you guys have heard me for those of you that were in some of those meetings down in Australia and New Zealand. And of course, I went over to Korea and then Japan during that trip, went over to Europe shortly thereafter and spent some time there. <clears throat> you know, I, I obviously travel a lot, but my goal is to always help people understand that are you in business? If you are in business, then treat it like a business. Mm -hmm. Don't treat it like something that's somewhat maybe or somewhat, uh, I don't know, or I'm not sure, or maybe I'm embarrassed. I don't wanna go out and tell people what I do every day or how I build my business or how I make an income. But don't be afraid to folks. It, in this world that we live in, everybody is driven by the income that they create, everybody. And so it doesn't matter if you are working at a convenience store or at a market, it doesn't matter if you're an attorney or a plumber. Uh, I think for those of you in, in um, certain parts of the world, um, solicitor would be maybe a better term. But the fact is, it doesn't matter what you do in life. This is an add-on business. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, they can add it on to what they're currently doing. And then it's the matter of time that you're willing to invest or have to invest. Again, not everybody has a lot of time. Uh, we've got a lot of different challenges in life. We've got you know, people that rely on us every day, whether it be in the office, whether it be at home, uh, whether it be friends, whether it be ailing family members, people that are getting older and aged, whatever it might be, we all have these, these pressures. And again, those social pressures that we have to deal with are things that only allow us to do so much. But on a daily basis, we can do things that we can allot time to. And again, whatever time you're willing to put into it, that's your investment into your business. It's part of your investment is time. And we call it time, resources, money. And so part of that is your time. So if you're willing to put time into it and you're willing to say, okay, I'm going to put an hour a day into it or, or two hours a day, or maybe it's two hours a week, or maybe it's 20 hours a week, or maybe it's full time. And then it ends up being something that you put 40 or 50 or 60 hours into a week, but you love what you do and you love telling people about what you do and you love telling people about these products that change people's lives and give them health and wealth and happiness and allowing them to have great success in their homes, in their household, in their, in their lives, in their lifestyle, because that's really what we're working on right now. We're not working on anything else. We're not working on you know, something that's fictitious. This is real, this is reality. And so for a lot of people, I know I've got aging parents, folks. I've got, I mean, my, <clears throat> I hope my dad's not watching this, but my dad is 80 years old. He still thinks about building businesses every day. He calls me, hey, what about this? And we have you thought about that? And I know that, you know, between the amount of time that he reads books and watches YouTube, I don't know how he has time to think about some of these other things, but he seems to find it. And so he, oh, well, have you talked to, you know, this guy, have you talked to that guy? And I happen to be uh, uh, the chairperson for our, um, started a 501c3 years ago, a, a charitable foundation. And so we, you know, identify different ways to help people and, and uh, sources of income and, and give people, you know, give back basically is what we do. And so he's always, oh, Aaron, have you talked about, uh, you know, this with this guy who runs that charity? I'd really like to think about doing something with him. And you know, developing something. And I, oh, dad, you know, I'd love to, but I am really, really busy. Yeah. So 
I think there's just a lot of that that we have to really take into consideration and be cognizant of those people that we work with daily and really determine and define what is it that you want out of this business and how much time can you invest into it? Because once you start and once you make that commitment, now the focal point is on you actually getting your return on your investment and then getting your product for free. Then you start developing your team and your organization and you start to see as that volume grows and the people grow and the numbers grow, then you can start working backwards. So every time I tell people, set your goal, whether it be a short-term, mid-term or long-term goal, really set those goals and understand what it is. And then I want you to do one thing that we haven't talked about for a long time. <clears throat> That's to put together an accomplishment board. So one of the things that a lot of people do is they have this wonderful vision board or this dream board. And they have different things that they put on the board and they put it up on you know, a wall or on a refrigerator or somewhere. And they want to look at it every day and it has to be there and it has to be, it has to be real and it has to be valuable. But what a lot of people don't do is they don't put their accomplishments up there as their wins. And I think if you were doing this the right way, you would actually create another board that now that you're starting to have some wins and now that you're starting to have some successes, put up your accomplishment board. So what have you been able to accomplish with the business that you're doing? And then how can you actually make that translate into your accomplishments so that you can actually show yourself, hey, I'm going to celebrate my wins today. I'm super excited. I've done a great job with, with building my business. I've been able to accomplish A, B, and C. And now I want to show it off not only to myself, but maybe to others. And so sometimes that's where, you know, a new vehicle comes into play or maybe new home or maybe your uh, vacation or holiday to somewhere in the, in the world where you have an opportunity uh, to show people your trip or your uh, exotic locale and it gives them an opportunity. So again, I say all of that because I really, really want you to know you are winners. You have an opportunity to win every single day. All you have to do is celebrate that win and celebrate your accomplishments. And, and it's okay. It's okay to be a little self-gratifying. It's okay uh, to say, man, right on, I did it. You know, I've done it. I've, I've been able to accomplish what I set out to accomplish and I'm gonna celebrate. Whether you go to a really nice dinner or maybe you have a great bottle of wine or whatever it is, you have an opportunity to celebrate those wins and let other people celebrate it with you and then show them how they can do the same. And it's a real infectious world that we live in. You're a magnet and people are driven and, and pulled, maybe sometimes uncomfortably, to those people that are successful. So really my message tonight, start with the return on investment, work on getting your product for free, and then start looking at the behaviors that are driven by the psychology of the plan so that you can really truly understand that's where I wanna go. I really wanna go to that, that spot. I really wanna go to that place and then start working towards that. That might be your, your short-term goal. Maybe it becomes your midterm goal or maybe it becomes your long-term goal. But once you start to put together that information, you will have success. I guarantee it. It's impossible not to have success when you set your goals, when you put them on paper, when you put them on your dream or vision board, and then when you start celebrating your wins and your accomplishments. So with that being said, I'll turn the, back, the time back to you, Katie, unless you have any questions. Oh, no, that was fantastic, Aaron. I think um, it's really good to hear all that information and feel uplifted and inspired. And I think you made some really good points today and, you know, helping people realize their dreams and not just saying it's just not about the money. It's like, well, what do you actually want to do with the money? How is that going to change your life and impact others? And I think that's um, really important. So with that, I think we'll leave it there and sign out. So everyone, thanks for getting on the call today. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And thank you, Aaron, for taking the time out of your day. It's great to see you. We don't see you enough. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been great being here with you folks. I really, really, really enjoy it. So um, have a have do have a wonderful weekend. Okay, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. See you. Bye.